Hey guys, I'm Boris, I'm a physician assistant. Today for a pre-PA Q&A, I'm going to answer a question from a high school student about picking the right PA school for them. So uh, without further ado, here's this person's question. I'm just gonna put it up on the screen. They say, hi, Mr. Temkin, that's not how you spell my name. There's no P, I don't know why everyone puts a P in there, but everyone literally puts a P in the middle of my name. I don't know, man. It's just like, it seems easier to spell it with a P. Maybe I should change it that way. But no, my, uh, my name does not have a P in it. <laughs> anyway, barring that, let's go uh, into the question. So the question says, I'm a high school senior who is interested in becoming a PA. I'm looking for colleges that would be awesome fit for me going into this career. What I'm having trouble with is distinguishing the quality of the programs at these given colleges and if there's something I should look for in colleges to maximize my immersion of becoming a PA. Uh, if I'm unclear about anything, please get back to me. No, I think that was a pretty clear question. And the question is basically, you know, which PA program is right for me? How do I pick a PA program that would be good for me becoming a B, uh, PA? So it's a, it's a pretty simple question to ask. I'll just read you my answer verbatim and then kind of riff on that just a little bit. I basically told them, hi, uh, the main things to look for uh, are the first time pants pass rate. So basically what the pants pass rate means and each of, uh, each of the PA schools will have this on their website for the past few years, as many years as the program has been open, their uh, first time pants pass rate. And what that means is the previous class, let's say class of 2020, uh, 2021, you know, class of 2021 graduated, they all of course took the pants, what percentage of them passed it on their first try? If it's above 90%, you're usually pretty solid. It used to be that, you know, it was pretty normal for schools to have 95, 96, 100% pass rates, but since the pants was actually changed, I want to say in 2020, maybe 2019, uh, the pants got a little harder, it was different, they took away what was known as uh, like buzzwords. So like if you see a certain word or a term, you basically know what they're talking about. They kind of took that away and made it more uh, like they would describe the term instead of actually giving you like a buzzword. So it actually became a little harder. You kind of had to know what you were looking for, what you were talking about a little bit more. So the pants basically became a little harder. Pants pass rates went down a little bit, not too much, but down. And so uh, basically anything around 90 or above 90 nowadays is pretty good, I think. So basically that's the first thing that you would look for when you're evaluating whether a school is decent or not. Uh, you look for that pants pass rate, uh, but spoiler alert, basically every school that's been around for a couple years, at least, you're gonna see that their pants pass rate is more or less at least that 90%. So yeah, uh, not really something to look for, but something to look for, you know. If you happen to find a school where it's like 75% or something, you know, your radar should go up and you should be like, all right, what's wrong with this program? You know, what happened? Anyway, so that's the first thing you look for is the first time pants pass rate, and that should be on every school's program, unless, unless the school is brand new, unless it's a program that's not yet accredited, maybe they have a provisional accredited rating, maybe they're not accredited at all, maybe this is a new program. Uh, if that's the case, uh, it might still be an okay program, you know, but the thing is there's no proof, there's no track record, you don't know. Uh, the good thing about these new programs is that they're not nearly as selective as established programs. So for instance, the program that I went to, uh, LeMoyne College, I think they've been around since the 90s. So they've been around for like over 20 years. They've got a proven track record of success, of high pants pass rates, of solid uh, graduates, you know, people who are becoming good providers. So they are, of course, way more competitive than like a brand new program that just opened, you know, hasn't even gotten their accreditation or is working on it or it's provisional or something. Those kinds of programs are gonna be much less competitive than a program that's been around for 10, 15, 20 years and has a proven track record of success. So the good thing about these new programs is they might be easier to get into if you happen to be kind of a borderline applicant, not super competitive. The bad news is, you know, pretty obvious, they don't have that proven track record of success. You don't know what you're getting into. You don't know how good the program is going to be. And scariest of all, if they don't have an accreditation or if it's like a provisional accreditation, you don't know if they are going to get accredited for sure. And that means you graduate from it, they're not accredited, or they, for whatever reason, don't get that accreditation. Your degree is basically not a degree. You can't sit for the pants. You basically wasted your time. So more than likely, that's not going to happen. But that is always the risk of attending a program that's not yet accredited or is provisionally accredited. So if, uh, if I'm wrong about that, you know, somebody please correct me. I'm not an expert at these things. But as far as I can tell, I think that's how the thing works. So basically... Um, yeah, I think I said everything I needed to there. 
So I told the person, you know, look for a school with a first time pants pass rate of 90% or higher for the first few years or for their last few years, uh, their last few graduating classes. And then I told them it honestly doesn't really matter where you go to PA school. The programs are so competitive that you'll want to apply to as many programs as possible, assuming you're competitive for these programs. So for instance, if you haven't taken the GRE or you got a super low GRE score, probably don't apply to schools that require the GRE. If you have, you know, not a whole lot of hours, but your GPA is high, probably apply to schools that focus more on GPA than hours. If you have a ton of hours, but you have kind of a lower GPA, you know, find schools that uh, are more geared towards, you know, they have like a higher hours requirement, let's say 2000 PCE hours, but maybe that means that they don't look at GPA quite as highly as some other programs, you know, do your research. Uh, but the rule of thumb is apply to at least 12 programs if possible, but make sure that these 12 programs are programs that you personally are pretty competitive for, and then you'll have the best uh, chance of getting in. So um, this person is asking me more or less, like what should I look for in a PA school uh, that makes it good. I kind of told you just the pants pass rate and that they're accredited, they're established, they've been around for at least a few years. Uh, but, you know, beyond that, I honestly would not look too closely uh, because these programs are so competitive, so hard to get into anyway. I would be, you know, take this with a grain of salt, I guess, but just I, I wouldn't be too, too selective on which program you hope to go to because what matters is that you go to one, you do well, you pass, then you pass the pants and you become a provider and then you can start actually you know, getting a big boy job and actually becoming a provider, you know, and actually building your practice and developing how you practice and whatnot. Uh, where you go to school kind of matters, but not really, honestly. What matters is that you get the, uh, the basic education, enough education to pass the pants, which is all the PA school really needs to teach you how to do is to pass the pants, give you that very basic fundamental knowledge, and then from there you actually build your practice, you know. So it kind of matters where you go to school, but it honestly kind of doesn't as long as they teach you enough to pass the pants. All right, so that's my two cents on that. You know, uh, this person basically asking what the best uh, way to pick a PA school is, what PA school is right for them. That being said, I actually, uh, I just thought of something. Since this person is a high school student, they said that they're a high school senior looking at becoming a PA. Honestly, another thing that I tell them, and I should actually probably write this back to them in a Instagram message since they reached out to me through Instagram, is, uh, I feel that like most people nowadays, especially younger folks, actually reach out to me through my Instagram and not through email or through my website. You know, maybe email and websites are kind of going by the wayside. Maybe I should stop paying every year for my website and just kind of focus on Instagram. I don't know, what do you guys think? But anyway, um, one other thing that I thought of for this person, because they are so young, they're not already in college, they're not, you know, already past college, they're actually so young that they haven't even started college. I would actually, assuming that this person has a very high college, or, um, a very high high school GPA, they're very smart, they're very good in high school, they're already a solid student, I would actually consider what's known as a, uh, a three plus two program. So a lot of colleges have them, my college, the PA school that I went to included, has th uh, something called a three plus two program. What that means is that you basically have a direct entry into PA school. So it's a three plus two program, meaning three years of undergrad, two years of PA school, and that means that in five years, you become a PA from high school to PA in five years. That means you do your three years of undergrad and then two years of PA school. And if you keep a certain GPA and get your hours and all the requirements while you do those three years of undergrad, you're guaranteed a spot in the PA school class, which is, if any of you have been following me for a while, you can understand how freaking huge that is to have a guaranteed spot in PA school right out of high school. Did I say that right? A guaranteed spot in PA school right out of high school. That's incredible. That is incredibly valuable. Now, it takes a lot. You know, you have to keep a very high GPA or you're out. Uh, you have to get your hours during that, you know, undergrad education while you're getting that high GPA or, you know, you're out. Uh, but it is an incredibly amazing opportunity. So if you're a high school student looking at going to PA school, look up three plus two programs because it's a fantastic, fantastic option for you if you're certain that you want to be, you know, a PA not a nurse, not a doctor, not a physical therapist, you want to be a PA, you're certain you're not in college yet, look up those three plus two programs. Great idea. And I'm actually going to answer this person with that as well. But anyway, um, oops, sorry, I itches. Anyway, this person, uh, thank you for the great question, how to pick a PA program, which one's right for you. Stay tuned for the next pre-PA Q&A. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Just reach out to me through my website, Boris the PA, uh, through my email, Boris the PA at gmail.com or through my Instagram, Boris the PA. Pretty simple, right? I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.